First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Good evening and welcome to First at Five from WUFT News. I'm Ashley Weinstein. And I'm Jake Reyes. Thank you for joining us tonight. The Gainesville Police Department held a meeting updating the community with information on the K-9 unit last night. WUFT's Levi Diamato is here to tell us what happened at the meeting and how people felt about it. Gainesville Police Department's K-9 unit is under scrutiny after an incident last July with a police dog. A community discussion yesterday quickly turned hectic as neighbors clashed over the unit suspension. I spoke with community members to learn more about their concerns. No, it's insulting. Our people are being brutalized by y'all, and y'all protecting the system instead of actually protecting people. City leaders presented information about the unit. The city manager, chief inspector, and the current and former police chief spoke on its benefits. The unit was disbanded following the mauling of Terrell Bradley by a canine in July. Some didn't feel hurt at the meeting, held at Joseph Williams Elementary School. Um, they adjourned the meeting right before I wanted to speak, and they adjourned the meeting because I think they want to blame community members for being upset. As neighbors shared their opinions, tensions arose when people started yelling at each other. Some are calling for the unit to be abolished, while others shared their support for the unit. Signs were displayed criticizing the police department. Mayor Harvey Ward says there is room for improvement. We should continually review policies. We should continually offer training. We should keep doing what we're doing. The unit also faced allegations of racism in a former officer's lawsuit prior to the mauling. This was the second meeting on this topic, and a third will be held in the coming weeks. On Monday, Gainesville's Public Safety Committee will continue the discussion of the K-9 unit. Thanks, Levi. If you cycle in the dark, Gainesville Police Department has just the thing for you. In an effort to increase cyclist and pedestrian safety, GPD is hosting a bike light giveaway. In exchange, attendees must sign a pledge promising to use the lights. They are also giving out reflective armbands for free. The Gainesville the giveaway is tomorrow from 5 to 8 p.m. at 1600 West University Avenue next to Wawa. The temperature has changed drastically in the past few days. I was sweating a little bit on my walk into the studio today. <laughs> I was too. And WQFT's Julia Haley is here with our forecast to tell us a little bit more about that. Can you tell us what we're, if we're going to expect to stay, for it to stay warm for good? Well, Ashley, Jake, we are heating up again just in time for spring. Currently seeing a 12 degree increase in Gainesville, 15 degrees in Stark, and even 16 degrees in Jacksonville, 14 degrees for Live Oak. Those temperatures currently sitting in the 80s, which are still above average for this time of year. And this will stay for the rest of the week, but more on that later. Currently seeing those southerly winds giving us that heat for our evening. And outside of our studio, seeing those blue skies with those clouds, it's a great day to go outside and soak in the sun while you still can. For this evening, though, we are dropping from the upper 70s into the 60s overnight. Back to you. Thanks, Julia. Trump supporters continue to rally along the Southern Boulevard Bridge in West Palm. NBC's Sarah Wallace tells us how supporters are showing continued devotion to the former president amid fears of a possible indictment. Honks of support for scores of vocal and colorful Trump fans who lined the Southern Boulevard Bridge in Palm Beach. They are all closely watching the grand jury goings on in New York City and have plenty to say about a possible Trump indictment and District Attorney Alvin Bragg. Are you concerned that President Trump will be indicted? Well, I, I think it's just the show. He might be, but I think it's all about... Alvin Braggs, who wants to be the next governor of New York. If he gets indicted, he'll, his popularity will go sky high. Go ahead and do it. All right. Do you think he'll be indicted? No. No. There's Why? no evidence. There's no evidence. It's a witch hunt. Which is exactly what the former president called it in this video posted on his Truth social media platform. These four horrible radical left Democrat investigations of 
your all-time favorite president, me, is just a continuation of the most disgusting witch hunt in the history of our country. Trump also had choice words about Stormy Daniels, the adult film star he allegedly paid hush money to keep silent. The Stormy Horseface Daniels extortion plot, they're all sick. And it's fake news. Stormy Daniels released a tweet in response to someone's post, saying in part, I'll dance down the street when he is selected to go to jail. Back outside Mar-a-Lago, fisherman William Christian watched the activity, shaking his head at all the fuss. I ain't got nothing against Donald Trump. You know what I mean? But I think if he stopped doing half the stuff he's doing, he wouldn't get himself in so much trouble. A lot of differing opinions. It is important to note, though, that all of the Trump supporters we talked to here said that they hope no matter what the grand jury decides, the reaction will be peaceful. Sarah Wallace, NBC News, Palm Beach, Florida. Today in Ocala, the Senior Resource Foundation of Ocala hosted Excellent Adventures. It's an expo for active seniors showcasing activities for seniors in north central Florida. Our very own Francis Capper was there and he shows us what was on display and how community members reacted. The expo featured representatives from Florida State Parks. The state parks were seeking senior volunteers to help bolster their ranks. Marion County Parks and Recreation was also at the expo showcasing their upcoming events within the community. The Senior Resource Foundation of Ocala president, Phyllis Silverman, said that she thinks the community is in need of events like this. This is the first of its kind, and I don't believe there are any other events for seniors that resemble this. All of the proceeds from the expo are given to the Boys and Girls Club of Marion County. Silverman said that the Senior Resource Foundation does more than just fundraising. Well, the Senior Resource Foundation has a lot of other programs. In addition to having fundraising events, we also have a program called Seniors at Work, where we try to put seniors into part-time positions available. In addition to Seniors at Work, the Senior Resource Foundation also provides technology training to seniors in need. In Ocala, Francis Capper, WUFT News. And if you're not a senior, you're still in luck. There are other things you can do to get out in the community. As the spring weather finally arrives, you could go out for weekly bird watching walks. But be wary if you're thinking of hitting the beach. The seaweed blob that's approaching the Gulf Coast could have impacts on your health. We'll tell you all about what you need to know right after the break. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Welcome back. One Alachua Natural Society is educating through outreach and its opportunity to take advantage of this incoming warmer weather. The Alachua Audubon Society brings the Gainesville birding community together through their weekly Wednesday bird walks. AAS hosts the walks at Sweetwater Wetlands Park from September through the end of May. Starting at 8.30 a.m., expert park rangers guide birders through the path while promoting wildlife conservation. The walks are open to anyone who is interested and free except for the parking fee. Rare species of birds are spotted in the spring months. Vice President of AAS Tim Hardin says the walks create bonds between people from all walks of life fostering that sense of community and like growing closer to people who might not have like you know necessarily like agree on a lot of other things like it's it helped me like find the humanity in other people in addition to the walks aas works with alachua county public libraries to offer free birding kits the kits include a field guide binoculars and a resource guide to the best birding parks Newberry preschoolers made their way to an annual story time at a local library. But away from the picture books and novels, this story time brought live goats to the library lawn. Children ages 3 to 5 were invited to Newberry Branch Library for the annual goat story time. The event provides children with an opportunity to meet and interact with goats from a local farm. Whiteacres Dairy Goats Farm owner Catherine Whiteacre says that the event became a staple for the community. To her, the event represents the connection between livestock and the future of the Newberry community. The main thing I appreciate is them getting their hands on them because until you've actually encountered the, the hands-on, you're not really uh, 
uh, connecting with the animals. And that's the first thing you have to do to be able to ask them for milk and have them have babies and all the, the things that go with raising livestock. Whiteacre hopes to continue providing the library with dairy goats in what's become a 12-year tradition. As the giant blob of seaweed called sargassum approaches us in Florida, so too does spring in trips to the beach. So is it safe to travel near it? CNN's Mandy Gather tells us what experts say you need to know in today's Health Minute. It's smelly, possibly harmful. Twice the width of the continental U.S. Large mass of seaweed is moving. 13 million tons, that's a lot of algae. And even if some of that comes ashore on beaches of Mexico or Florida, it's going to wreak havoc on tourism. It's called sargasm, a naturally occurring variety of seaweed. This year's bloom could be the largest ever. The so-called blob is expected to push through the Caribbean and up into the Gulf of Mexico during the summer and is expected to be in Florida around July. Sargasm can be dangerous to humans. That's why experts say cleaning the beaches needs to be done with caution. It releases hydrogen sulfide, a toxic gas that you don't want to, you know, breathe, uh, particularly when it's, it's at high concentrations and in closed areas, say with low wind. And it also has a lot of arsenic in the tissue. If you travel to an area with sargasm, officials say to supervise children, avoid touching or swimming near the seaweed, use gloves if you must handle it. If you have an irritation or breathing problems around hydrogen sulfide, stay away from the beach and avoid or limit your time on the beach if you have asthma or other respiratory problems. For Health Minute, I'm Thankfully, we already had our spring break last week and we were able to catch the beach before with some of the blobs. Right, but if you're looking to vacation to the beach despite the news, our very own Julia Haley is here to tell us what we could expect for the weather. Well, definitely go to the beach while you still can. When the blob arrives, beaches may even be closed. Above average highs can even contribute to the blob. I'll have your end of week forecast coming up. You're watching WUFT TV News. Yesterday felt like winter. Today feels like spring and tomorrow is going to feel like summer. Currently seeing those highs in the lower 80s, 82 for Gainesville and 82 even for Ocala for our highs. Now, of course, those temperatures currently sitting in the 80s as well due to those southerly winds bringing the heat to our area, seeing a 14 degree increase here in Gainesville, 16 degrees even in Jacksonville and 17 degrees increase in Stark over the past 24 hours. Now, outside of our studio, currently seeing those blue skies 81 degrees outside of our studio with those clouds as well seeing that sun for this evening and we are dropping into the 60s and even the upper 50s overnight so for your thursday it's going to stay pretty sunny and warm those lows once again staying in the upper 50s we won't see much fog but if you do live in the panhandle or know anyone they will be seeing some fog there but over here really just seeing those visible uh, conditions for our morning for our Thursday sitting in the 80s and rising even into the upper 80s. Our UV index is very high, so you want to put your sunscreen on, maybe even put your sunglasses on to stay safe from those rays. And as we do have the fronts currently sitting just north of us, it's not really going to affect us here in Florida, but we do have a cold front moving our way by the end of this weekend and even into next week. Now for this year, we are changing into an El Nino phase. We were in a La Nina phase and currently in a neutral phase. And what this means is you see more storms on the Western Pacific due to all of these winds, but you are going to see a change and this change is going to lead to more storms sitting in the Central Pacific and the storms in the Central Pacific are going to give us wetter, possibly a wetter summer this summer, especially for our hurricane season. So you'll see the wet summer happen with that chance for showers overall, but you will see more wind shear, which is going to lead to less chances for hurricanes. However, hurricanes can still occur. And when you have a hurricane, just one can be devastating. So the storms are more likely to form near 
near the Gulf of Mexico, and they're going to form without much of a kind of warning. So you want to stay prepared for hurricane season and, of course, for any storm within this year. For this week ahead, those highs are in the mid 80s into the weekend, sunny skies overall, and you have that cold front approaching around next week. Look at that, those highs sitting in the 80s, very above average for this time of year, even in spring, feeling like summer. Back to you. Thanks again, Julia. Gainesville High School's basketball teams will take on an unlikely competition this weekend, law enforcement. GPD officers will take to the courts against GHS All-Stars players this weekend. Law enforcement will tip off to build trust with the youth in the community. Continuing with this tradition, the fifth annual basketball cop game will be held at Gainesville High School this, this year. The event is sponsored by Sleep Center Gainesville and admission is free. The girls game will begin at 3 p.m. immediately followed by a boys game at 4.30 p.m. That seems like such a great opportunity for those boys and girls to play the officers. Oh, for sure. But that's not the only good news, uh, sports news that we have. Jensen, what is going on today? Yeah, so a lot of Gator sports have been happening all day today. And the next one to happen is a softball game, and that will be starting tonight. I will have more on that and other sports news when we come back. Stay tuned. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Welcome back for sports. I'm Jensen Young. It was a top 20 matchup on the court as Florida women's tennis takes on number three Michigan today. WUFT's Chris Will is at the match and joins us live from the Gator Tennis Complex. Chris, how is it going? Thanks, Jensen. It's certainly setting up to be an exciting conclusion here in Gainesville as the number three Michigan Wolverines currently trail the number 18 Florida Gators 3-1. to one. As you can see, the men's team is clear, cheering behind me. Florida snagged the first point of the day after winning two of the three doubles matchups with a 1-0 lead heading into singles matches. Six individuals from each team took the courts here in Gainesville. As things currently stand, Florida took court one in straight sets. But Michigan also won on court six in straight sets while UF got court three. They currently lead one set to nothing on court four and five. If they win, they'll walk away with the team win. Florida will look to move to nine and four on the year. If they get this win, they'll be back in action on Friday when they travel to Mississippi State. Live from Gainesville, Chris Will, WFT News. Back to you, Jensen. Thanks, Chris. Elsewhere in Gator Sports, the Gator softball team takes the field once again, but they're playing away from Gainesville for the first time in 10 games. Florida is coming off of their first SEC Series win of the season, taking two of three games against Missouri this weekend. Tonight, they take on the Stetson Hatters, who are 17-12 and 12 on the year for the first of two games this season. The Gators are winners of five of the last six games and are a perfect 4-0 away from home. First pitch in DeLand is at six. Staying on the road, the Florida lacrosse team is headed, headed to Georgia to take on Mercer, and it was a clinic. The Gators took the victory 15-6, their first victory away from home this season. Florida now sits with a record of 6-3. Five players scored more than once for the Gators, and junior Maggie Hall shined with two goals and three assists. Next up, the Gators head back home to host Cincinnati on Saturday. The Gator women's basketball team takes the court again tomorrow in the WNIT tournament. Florida will take on the Clemson Tigers in the Super 16. The Gators got here with two wins in the first two rounds over Wofford and Wake Forest. Florida has allowed 63 points in both games and scored 80 en route to their last win over the Demon Deacons. Clemson, the Clemson Tigers beat High Point and Auburn on their way to the Super 16 to play Florida. First tip is tomorrow at 7. Spring football is Spring football practice is back after spring break, and, and the orange and blue game is right in sight. Secondary coach for the Gators, Corey Raymond, says that the focus for his group shifts following spring break. In other Gator football news, Russ Callaway has been named the new tight end coach for the Gators, and Callaway joined the staff last year in an off-the-field role after bouncing around the college and pro levels, including spending five years at Sanford as the offensive coordinator, as well as quarterback coach and wide receivers coach. Thanks, Jensen. After this long winter, many of us has been taking to the beaches over the spring break. For a group of kids here in the state who rely on ventilators, a day at the beach is a dream come true. And a special camp made it possible for 11 children to have some fun in the sun. 
Kids come from this yearly camp called Ventilation Assisted Children's Center or FACC and some of them get in the got in the water. Special handheld ventilators allowed the kids to breathe while in the water and Miami Beach Fire and Rescue was there to support them. 11 children took part in the experience. Other camp activities for the children included sailing and bowling. That is just too sweet that those kids had that opportunity. It really warms my heart. It does to me. I love the beach and I think everybody should have that opportunity. So I know. Amazing. And with the weather warming up, I'm just so excited to put away my winter sweater sweaters. I already started and pull out my bathing suits and tank tops. Is it time for that yet? Yeah, definitely the perfect time for some spring cleaning. And not just that, I have your fashion forecast for your Thursday. If you're going outside tomorrow, perfect day to get some sun. Maybe even put on your sunglasses, short sleeves, maybe even a cute little floral dress, flip flops and tennis shoes for tomorrow. Seeing those sunny skies and those warm, almost summer like temperatures lasting and outside of our studio currently seeing that sun start to set those clouds rolling through with those blue skies outside. Now we are staying in the 80s throughout the week. See even 86 for your Thursday, 87 for your Friday. That sun lasting longer and longer seeing that chance for showers for the weekend but just scattered showers overall above average temperatures overall as well now we do have some clouds rolling in for our weekend and even into Monday and Tuesday as we do have that cold front starting to creep up and make its way toward us here in Gainesville but for now really just seeing those sunny skies last just a little longer back to you we, we hear you loud and clear, we Julia. We hear you loud and clear. <laughs> right after we get off the desk today, we're heading to the beach. <laughs> BBC World News is next, and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. But remember, your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a great night.